I was recently on Chase Jarvis's show. He's a famous photographer in Seattle, uh, does a great video show too. And uh, we talked about cameras and why they aren't very innovative. You know, my 5D Mark III doesn't even have Wi-Fi in it yet. And uh, I wanted to talk to Contour because they've just shipped a, a really killer new sports and uh, a motion camera that, ha that uses all sorts of fun stuff like iPhones and uh, Bluetooth and uh, GPS. And we're going to find out a lot more about how, how hard it is to innovate in the hardware space right now. Who are you? I'm Mark Barros, founder of Contour, currently the CEO. Uh, started the business in a garage, uh, super passionate about video, startups, and building a really awesome company. Yeah, and you make these, uh, these cameras, and that's why we're, we're here, right? We're here to you talk just, about our next product. A couple of weeks ago, you shipped the new uh, version. What does what the new version do so, for, for people who don't know who you are and what these things do? Yeah, so people haven't heard of Contour. We focus on making it super easy to capture and share action video. And so we introduced a new product called Contour Plus 2, um, top of the line, best product in the market. And so what it's really about is this between the last version, a couple of things are really new. One is did a whole lot more with kind of data and video. So we're the only company that you capture video and then rich data like speed, elevation, distance. And did a whole bunch of cool things so you can post that to YouTube and Facebook and Vimeo and give you all control so you can hide your location or show your speed. But social integration with data was a big piece for us. Second, we made it really, really easy to use. So if you haven't used a contour, it's actually no power button. Yeah. We literally slide the switch forward to record. Uh, we get rid of the whole, hey, is it on? Is it not on? Am I capturing it? Slide it off to stop. So the product's even easier. And then out of the box, for $399, you get everything. So the original version was $499. So for $399, you get the camera, waterproof case, memory card. So we made it easier to use, more affordable, and a whole lot more social. And do you have a lot of ways to mounted on things like poles and skis and surfboards and stuff like that. I should that. have brought all the mounts. We've yeah. got, I don't know, like 50 different accessories for snow and bike and helmets and body. And what's amazing is just these cameras you, you wear to capture video in angles we never thought of. And so what's yeah. interesting is in this category is we're seeing people use the product to not only just capture point of view, but you see a lot of capture myself. And so they'll mount it literally on poles to record what they're doing. Uh, and it's actually pretty interesting. So there's a set of accessories, a couple come in the box. Um, people love to use the product to capture video that normally a kind of hands-free or iPhone just can't do. Yeah, I, you know, one reason I uh, I like one of your competitors is they're they're right <laughs> around the corner from my house. GoPro. We'll talk about GoPro. What you know, it's a fun competition between you and GoPro, For sure. and and now all the Japanese guys are going. Oh, there's a market here. We're going to build cameras. You know, I think Sony got in there and started copying you guys. So. What's that like? Because uh, both you and Nick at GoPro have similar stories. They, they, you bootstrapped your way into this, and it's a yeah, really it's an interesting amazing story. story. I mean, Contour started kind of in a garage eight years ago, entrepreneur. My mom actually wanted to be an accountant to, to start and kind of learned there was a need. We were trying to record, make it simple to capture what we were doing. That was eight years ago. It was kind of pre YouTube explosion. This is pre Facebook, even. And what's amazing is that there's like a billion connected people online. So the more yeah. they're connected, the more they're sharing video, the more they're buying a Contour or a GoPro what have you. You know, a couple of weeks ago, we even had on our Facebook page a whole kind of discussion around, we posted some photos of Sony and Contour, and they use a lot of, interesting, a lot of the same imagery, a lot of the same design. So it was an interesting conversation around the smaller company being innovative and really focusing on the customer need. What she found is that at the end of the day, people want to connect with their friends. Yeah. If you make that really, really simple, they keep using the product. If you don't, they actually stop using it. And yeah. what's interesting is the model has really changed where the consumer has the power. So if you make a bad product, they let you know quickly. So we spend a lot of time trying to make really, really good product. And we think to do video well, you have to do really cool software. Yeah. So we do, for example, apps with your phone. We actually take the app and let you start and stop the device. So we do some really cool things with software. We think it's kind of just the beginning of what we're doing. But and this is over Bluetooth or over Wi-Fi? Yeah, so we use Bluetooth. We find it's one of the most important things is just easy to use. People want stuff that just works out of the box, right? There's no screen on these things. So setting up Wi-Fi is actually pretty complicated. Now, you'll see competitors put on a box, hey, it's Wi-Fi, it's going to be great. And the reality is the user experience isn't very good. So we focused on Bluetooth. It lets us control the device. It doesn't let us pass content from the camera to the phone, phone to the web. Eventually, I don't know, a year, two years, three years, you'll literally record what you do and share it. And I think you'll see it get more and more from camera to the web. 
but we definitely leading the way in apps with your phone. Uh, yeah. We started this about a year and a half ago. People are now doing the features we did a year and a half ago, which is good. Um, but we've always thought the phone is a serious driver for the device. And that's why I wanted to have you on, because Apple today picked you to be in the Apple store. So they like your design. You know, I, I know the, the accessories business and that Apple doesn't pick crap for the stores because they have small stores and they, yes. and they uh, want to make sure that they have inventory turn at a higher rate than anybody in the business, right? Yeah, I was working with Apple was unbelievable. I always tell the team kind of the, the vision was, hey, let's make it good enough to be an Apple commercial, right? You have the camera, people recording video, showing the apps, right? I always envision like, love to make the product so good that they put it in those commercials. I don't know, quite there, but launching the Apple stores is a really big deal. It's the first time they've really carried this category in the store before. Uh, just Contour, it's launching in there. It's in, it's in stores in the US now, which is fantastic. And yeah. So just yeah. in time for the iPhone 5. It's just in time for the iPhone 5. It'll yeah. be interesting. We're excited for that. I think it's going to be a, a, an awesome phone. I think there's a whole lot of cool things we'll eventually be able to do. But. And that, that's why I wanted to have you on, because I, I'm writing this book about context. And I think cameras are going to be contextual things, because they're going to capture, when, when I shoot a picture or take a video, it's going to capture stuff about the context of the space and the activity that I'm in. I mean, that's part of the fun of sports cameras, right? Is, I'm surfing a wave or I'm jumping off a cliff or something like that and I want to show everybody in the world that I'm good at it. Now, I'm not that good at it, but, <laughs> but the people who use the cameras, you know, I, that's, that's the kind of stuff I see people doing, racing or biking or, you know, out, just out doing skateboarding or something like that. These cameras are so uh, low cost, high quality, uh, small and mountable makes it for a, a fun thing. But I think in the future that these are going to grab all sorts of data from the sensors, right? Because well, it's, it's really not just camera right? sensor. Like what you said earlier, it's kind of like, we've always thought this is a packet of emotion. What we found is that's the most interesting stuff. It's actually not hours of video people sharing. It's like 15 to 30 seconds of really cool stuff that your friends interact with. And we're finding is that the more information, the more interesting it is. Why well, haven't, I mean, Chase Jarvis and I uh, talked about this on a show. He works with uh, Nikon and Canon and all these camera companies. Yeah. And they're so slow on putting technology into the camera. I mean, my $3,500 camera doesn't even have Wi-Fi on it yet. Uh, you know, what, why is that? And, and uh, does that really give you an opportunity to, to innovate and outrun these guys because they're just incapable of adding new features to their cameras? I think it's, you're seeing that across the board. You're seeing companies that focus on kind of what that customer need is and really understand it. We think we understand action video and social video, that intersection really, really well. Yeah. So we think we can innovate. You know, the rest is becoming a commodity. You can literally buy an image sensor. You can actually buy an image sensor from Sony. You can buy a processor. It'll actually label you to, to compile anything you want into a consumer experience. But like understanding the need and spending time with your customers and, and really getting good at it, that's hard. It's taken us a long time to get good at it. I mean, some early products, they had issues, right? We'd missed some things, right? We kind of missed on how easy it is to use or record. We had those little, those little pieces, and I think we're getting better and better. And so every product you see us come out with gets better than the last one. Easier to use, more social, more data. Uh, those larger companies just seem to be missing the boat on that stuff, right? Yeah. I think clearly Apple's doing an unbelievable job at it, but everybody else generally start with the widget, and they focus on make the best camera, and then they slap on the software, right? So their mind, adding Wi-Fi is the feature. No, it's actually not the feature. The feature is I want to connect and share with my friends. Oh, by the way, I just use Wi-Fi to do that. So that's usually the disconnect is they focus on, okay, I'll put the feature in the box, check the box. It's a product marketing person, great. And that's about the end of the conversation. Yeah. What are you able to do now that you weren't able to do two years ago with these cameras? I think some stuff we said on is right is the products are getting better and better. The video is getting better. It's getting in smaller formats so you can mount them and wear them and capture video you couldn't get. Where people are more connected online, so it's easier for people to post and for their friends to comment and like, which drives the behavior of do it again. I think their question is like, how big is video going to be? We think video is actually only going to get bigger. Yeah. And then I think it's a question of, okay, how are they going to capture it? How are they going to share it? You're seeing all kinds of little startups, whether it's app-based startups only, that are just focusing on the kind of that editing piece or the enhancement piece to guys that just make the camera. We always believed in a really simple end-to-end. -end. It's a lot longer road. It takes a lot more time to get there. I mean, people looked at us for a long time, like, why are you making any software? And I think it's finally starting to get really good. And so I think if you can make that one of the core things your company does, it's like it's in the DNA of Contour, I think you can yeah. succeed long term. But it's hard. <laughs> one thing in a real studio, like, like Rocky set up here, you know, we have three cameras, and so Rocky can switch back and forth between right. cameras and get different points of view. 
what I, where I think you're going with this is maybe I use my iPhone for the main camera and I use a contour for the secondary camera or vice versa, mm -hmm. and I can switch back and forth because they're sending signals back to each other. Uh, we're already seeing iPhone apps like this. Yeah. Viclone and others are coming out with apps that let us shoot multiple cameras, yeah. join that video together, and then it automatically switches or does some fun editing, right? Are you thinking about that at all? Or? It's funny, is we actually, I mean, we anchor everything in this concept of, in turn we call it perspective. As we found, it's all about perspective. It gives you more depth. And it can range literally from multiple cameras capturing that moment. It can range from attachments to allow you to capture yourself to the data. And so, yeah, I think you're gonna see it be more and more social. And what we're finding is that literally people capture with two or three or four people. So how do you enhance that two or three or four people capture? And then they're sharing with two or three or four or maybe 20 or 50 people. So social, in our mind, it actually happens in the beginning. So how do you make it more social to capture, more social to share? I think that, that trend's gonna continue. Yeah, uh, you know, the, the book that I'm writing is, uh, is identifying that we're going into a new age. We, we came out of the social age, which brought us Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and yep. YouTube and Zynga and on and on, uh, Salesforce Chatter and Yammer, right? And we're going into a contextual age which builds on top of the social. Absolutely, I think all the way down to like, what are the different things you're going to be wearing? So if you have Nike Plus, how do you pull that data into the video experience so when you share it? It's got your data from Nike Plus with your contour stuff. Same thing on a social layer is okay, yeah, Facebook has the most people, but eventually there may be a different thing than Facebook. But you know, you're seeing lots of these social sites pop up. So we have to make it really simple to connect with your friends wherever it is you wanna connect. And so we're trying to focus on that layer. Yeah. Uh, the more We love that more people are connected. We love people are on mobile. We love that they're actually sharing and tweeting and talking about pieces. So the more easier we can make it to like pass really cool little clips, the better. Yeah, how, how is this uh, genre of cameras doing? What's interesting is like the traditional video camera market, it's going down 30% every year. Actually, Contour and GoPro are the only video-based companies actually still growing. And so when you look at the overall category, I mean, the iPhone pretty much took the as Chase Jarvis says, right, the phone in your pocket is to capture the image is the best phone. And so we're seeing that. We've always thought of ourselves almost as an accessory to that phone. And so what we're seeing is people that are active are using hands-free. We've always said hands-free was the category. It was back literally when we had a lens strapped to a camcorder. We don't think that's going away. But we think you'll see a mix between, like you said earlier, what do I capture with my phone? What do I capture with a hands-free device? We think that to get, start to get to a broader audience, the product has to get smaller, easier to wear, and I've got to use it literally from my music concert to my skiing. Yeah. You know, today they're very action-oriented, which is great because they let you go out waterproof, capture things in video and sport, which the content's really interesting. Yeah. But I think as you see the, the trend is you'll see it become smaller, more wearable, easier to use. What, hardware's different than software, you know, because <laughs> hardware you have physical cost of goods. Yeah. How much pressure do you feel to keep the cost down and to make compromises on the product to keep the cost under, you know, that $400 price point? Yeah, building the hardware part is, it's hard. It takes, a, it takes some cycles of it, right? With the quality of your supplier, the quality of your team. Um, but I think the biggest interesting thing with hardware is it's kind of become a traditional hey, you make a widget every 18 months or 12 months, people expect the cycle. I think there's more interesting conversation long-term, which is how does it become more iterative like a software model? So you have a hardware platform, you, you keep adding to it, you make it better and better. The challenge is always you, make the, you can make the last thing obsolete, and that's the biggest challenge, particularly from a customer perspective, right? I spent 1,800 bucks on something, 1,000 bucks. What do you mean you got a new version with a slightly better chip? I just bought the, and I think that's one of the biggest consumer challenges. They've kind of, behavior is, kind of like movies, like a hit comes out, you watch it, it's great, you wait for the next one. And Consumer Products has become that. I think there's an interesting conversation, which is actually, how do you switch that model? Yeah. The software model is really interesting because you can make the product better and better. Like the first thing you ship is actually the starting. <laughs> yeah. When you have a product, that thing you ship is the end. Like you can't go change it. Right? Yeah. You can't go recall a thousand or 10,000, 100,000 pieces or something. Yeah. So I think there's an interesting conversation, which is how does the consumer start to expect small improvements of things and how do you actually change the development model? Because it actually make it more affordable to, to make really cool consumer-based products. Right. Kickstarter came out since the last time I've talked to yeah. you and it's uh, encouraged a bunch of people to build hardware, the Pebble watch and stuff like that. It, are you seeing that effect or do you care about it or are you advising any companies? Because you probably know a lot of <laughs> stuff about hardware that these guys are going to learn in the next you know, two years, three years as they build their products and their yeah. companies. I think the, if you're a startup, first time you're kind of building a consumer-based product or something with hardware, yeah, there's a learning curve. 
and just like, okay, wait a second, I got a cool design, people want it, how the heck do I get from that to reality? I remember the first one we made was like, it's gonna be as great as an iPhone, first product off the line, you kinda looked at it and went, oh man, we got a lot of work to do. And so I think the Kickstarter concept is fantastic. The fact you can crowdsource and get your customers to tell you if they like something, we even kicked around ideas of like, how do, we, how do we put stuff on there and actually see are our customers interested in that accessory, for example, before we make it? Because as soon as you make anything, for example, a case, this could be 25 grand in tooling fees. Well, 25 grand in tooling fees, you better be right. <laughs> if you get it wrong, okay, change the tool, it's five grand, right? So quickly the cash goes away. So the Kickstarter, I think is really interesting. I think how you take it from the Kickstarter, people like the concept to it in their hands, that's hard. Mm -hmm. I think some of those guys run into that. Um, but I think the platform is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, the whole idea of customers telling you they like something and paying and actually putting their money down to say, I like it. Yeah. You have 50 people working oh, for you? Over 50 people. Wow, that's crazy. What, what's it like building a company in this space? What, you know, what, are you, what kind of culture are you trying to build? Yeah. What, what kinds of things are you trying to do to build a great company? What's interesting is that when you start a garage with two people, you, you don't actually think about that stuff, right? You just think, okay, we're passionate about this. We'll hire people kind of like ourselves. And you think the values become inherent. And then you start to get to a certain size. Like, actually, we should have started with that. We should have started with something very clear. Like, this is what we believe in. So Contour actually, 12 months ago, started that process. Literally, with that many employees, we started from the beginning. We asked all the employees, like, three questions. Why are you here? What, you know, why do you think we exist? What do we say we do? We don't do. And it was just like, it was raw. We kind of took that and formed a small kind of culture team and, and started to build values and started to you know think about the culture and the office space and the experience and really try to say okay the employee experience is actually really really important yeah. but i wish i would figured some of that stuff out earlier because <laughs> i think we would have you know made better decisions along the way it's funny i, I was in a conversation with our chairman and uh tony uh, shea from uh, zappos and they said yeah. the same thing you know that they wish they had started that effort totally. earlier yeah I swear, when I go out, sometimes I'll help with the University of Washington with startups, and it's usually the first thing we start with, is no one really asks me, like, why do you exist? Like, f start with that, and then figure out what you do and how you're going to do it. Yeah. And I think starting with that is actually very hard. It's pretty simple questions, but it spends a lot of time, spend a lot of time trying to get that right. And I think if you nail that and kind of what you believe in, then people will follow what you believe in. But people yeah. want something to believe in when you're a little company of two or three. Finally, uh, what, do you feel pressure to get, get the word out of, about the product? Yeah. and? and cause a marketing thing? Because GoPro's really done a really great, great job of that, you know? I give them credit, man. They made a box look cool, but I think overall, them growing, concert growing is a good thing. I think if we were by ourselves and there was no one else doing this, there wouldn't be a category. So I think the fact that category is good, but yeah, for Contour to really grow now, it's gotta get more people knowing about the product. We think of it as how do, you know, how do we grow more customers? How do we get our customers to love the product, tell their friends about it, bring more customers? You know, some of that you'll see us grow into retail, so like Apple's a significant piece for us, right? We've, been, we've really built a business and specialty. It's the first kind of real national account we've had. That actually matters. It starts to give you some scale. So for us, growing the brand awareness, more people talking about it, absolutely. We make great products that not enough people know about. It's great stuff, man. And it is a great product. So thank you very much for showing it to me. Where do we learn more about it? Go to Contour.com. Yep. The product is $3.99. You'll see it in the Apple stores. Uh, go to Contour.com and you can find a list of other retailers we're, we're announcing today. Yeah, a lot of journalists are saying it's the best on the market. I, I have to take mine out and try it out. <laughs> we're going to strap you to something or jump out of an airplane so we can get you. Rocky wants to throw video. me out of a plane. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for the time.